we saw how solving the homogeneous system ax equal to 0 can tell us a lot about solutions to ax equal to b, where b is not necessarily 0. In particular, if you know just one solution to this system, and all the solutions to this homogeneous system, then you know all the solutions to this system. We'll now take a closer look at the set n of a, which we have defined to be the set of x satisfying ax equal to 0. In other words, all the solutions to the homogeneous system ax equal to 0. So again, here f denotes a field, and a is an m by n matrix with entries from f. We'll begin by looking at this set geometrically. Suppose we're interested in the set of x, y satisfying minus 2x plus 3y equal to 0. As you probably know, this is going to define a line on the xy plane. So if I have my xy plane here, then I can sketch all the xy satisfying this equation. And we know that 0, 0 is on this line, so I can mark down the origin. And when x is 3, y is going to be 2. So this is also another point, so this is again 3, 2. And all you do is just connect the two dots with a line, and that's your line. Alright. Now, one thing that you might notice is, if you take any point on this line, say this point here, so this point is 3, 2. If you multiply by any constant, say I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 3, alright, so that will give us the point 2 and 4 over 3. And you will notice that there's also a point on the line. Okay, so 2 and 4 over 3 is also a point on the line. And if you say you double this to 6, 4, which is beyond what I've drawn here, you will also see that it's a point on the line. So 6, 4 will be somewhere up here. So what I'm saying is, if you pick a point on the line, multiplying by any constant will still give you a point on the line. And if you add any two points on the line, you also get a point on the line. For example, I have the point minus 1 and minus 2 over 3. And if I add these two, obviously I get back this point here. This is not a coincidence. If you have a line going through the origin, you can add any two points on the line, you will still get a point on the line. And if you take any point on the line and multiply it by a constant, you will still get a point on the line. And we can see this algebraically. So we want to characterize x, y satisfying this. In other words, we are just trying to find all solutions to this equation. And we can do this using row reduction. So we can form the augmented matrix, but in this case, we don't really need the right-hand side because it's 0. So we'll just look at this. If you multiply this row matrix by minus 1 half, you get to this. And so what this gives us is y is going to be a free variable. So I can set y to t. And x is going to be given by 3 half t. So the set of x, y satisfying this equation can be written as 3 half t and t. And we can write this as 3 half 1 and multiply by t, where t can be any real number. So we're working over the reals here. Now, this gives all the points on the line, right? Any point on the line can be written like this. So if you have two points on the line, say t1 times 3 over 2, 1, and t2 times 3 over 2, 1. And if you add them, you get precisely t1 plus t2 times 3 over 2, 1. Again, this is precisely the same form as this, so it's on the line. And if you multiply this by another constant, again, you get back something of the same form. So for this small example, we have verified algebraically what we have just said, that if you add any two points on the line going through the origin, you get back a point on the line. And multiplying a point through that line by constant, you get back a point on the line as well. 
So let's look at uh, something in higher dimension. Suppose this time, we're looking at the set of x, y, and z, satisfying this one single equation. Now you can draw it in the x, y, z space. So that will be in three dimension. And this will define a plane. Geometrically, you can see that if you take any two points on the plane and add them, you will still get a point on the plane. It's starting to become a bit difficult to convince yourself of that fact, isn't it? So we're going to do this algebraically. Again, we are interested in solutions to this equation. So if you form, if you look at the coefficient matrix, well, in this case, it's already row reduced. So y is a free variable and z is a free variable. So I can set y to s and z to t. That will give us x equal minus 2s minus 2t and so I can write x y z as minus 2s minus 2t s and t and if I break this up into s and t then this is what I get and I can take out the s and t alright so s and t can be any real number so the solution depends on these two tuples and how much of a multiple you take of each tuple uh, so this is a 3, not a 2, so this is a 3, and this is a 3. So if you add two tuples of this form, then of course you'll get back a tuple of this form. And it's even easier to see that if you multiply this whole thing by a constant, again you get something of this form. So again, for any two solutions to this system, you can add them and still get back a solution to this system. And if you take a constant multiple of any solution to this system, you can get a solution to this system as well. So this is a property that is true for n of a. But once you look at the set of solutions to a x equal to b, where b can have non-zero entries, it's no longer true. So this is a very special property of n of a. More generally, what you can show is that if u and v are in n of a and alpha is a constant then u plus v is also in n of a and alpha times u is also in n of a so this is not too difficult to check you can just check by looking at the definition of n of a so for any d you know a d is 0 where d is in n of a so if you have a u equals 0 and a v equals 0 then adding them you just get a u plus a v equal to 0 which is the same as a times u plus v equal to 0 so u plus v again is in n of a and you can do a similar thing for alpha times u now what that means is you can extend this even further and say the following. If someone give you k tuples from n of a, so d1 up to dk, so here the superscripts do not mean powers, it's just a way of indexing. So this really means that you have k different tuples and each one is denoted by d superscript some number. What you can say is lambda1 d1 plus lambda2 d2 plus all the way to lambda k dk is going to be in n of a as well for all lambda in f. So you can extend these two facts to something that says this. Now something that looks like this is called a linear combination of these tuples. So here what we say is this lambda 1 d1 up to lambda k dk is a linear combination of the tuples d1 up to dk. Now, using row reduction, we can find a finite number of tuples d1 up to dk in n of a, such that n of a is given by the set of all linear combinations of d1 up to dk. The way we obtain this d1 up to dk is, you look at your free variable. For each free variable, you're going to get one parameter. And for each parameter, it will be associated with a tuple that is a solution to ax equal to 0. So 
we can always write n of a as a linear combination of some k tuples where k would be the number of free variables after you row reduce a to a matrix in reduced row echelon form. Now the question that we are going to address is the following. If somebody just gives you d1 up to dk without telling you how they obtain them, and they don't correspond to what you get after you solve ax equals 0 using row reduction, can you still know if the d1 up to dk that you're given still give you all the members of this set n of a? Alright, so let me write it down. Given d1 up to dk in n of a, how do you tell if n of a is precisely the set of linear combinations of d1 up to dk? It's not clear how to answer this question at this point. Now this set here, so if you're given some tuples, and if you look at all the linear combinations of those tuples, that's called the span of the set of tuples that you're given. Okay, so this is usually denoted as the span of this. And the notion of span is something that will come back to a number of times in future videos. So in this video, we have introduced two new concepts, the concept of a linear combination and the concept of span. We'll be using these notions quite often in the next few videos.